Okay. Okay, so hi, I'm Ayla. Um, I'm an interaction designer and a visual designer. And three years ago, I started a blog called Dating by Design. Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about that. It's all about using the terms, tools, and techniques of design and applying them to modern relationships so we can understand both a little bit better. So I'll go back to my teacher in my undergrad, Charles Dobson. He once said, if you really want to do something new, look outside of design for inspiration. Uh, I had no further to look than relationships. So lots of fodder there. I started the project and the blog at the end of a really devastating relationship. And it was a way for me to sort of reframe my heartache and look at things through a different lens, the lens of design. It, I also found that it helped me understand my design process better. Um, so that's kind of the why me. Paul Rand once said, design is relationships. It's the relationship between form and color, user and designer, letters and words on a page, or systems like government or healthcare. So these are all things that we have to think about as designers. Um, we deal with these problems every day. They're wicked problems, messy situations that we get into as designers trying to understand complex systems. Um, what I've learned is that perfection is impossible. We have to make the most of what we have when we have it. So I started thinking about my strengths and passions. And uh, I realized there's more than one way to look at a design problem. I started thinking I should take a new approach to this project. So it had just been sort of a blog where I pulled things in from the web and wrote the occasional post about what I was thinking about in terms of design and relationships. And I realized that what I really love is words and metaphor and typography and letters. I love all these things. And so I came up with a new frame for my blog, and it's called The ABCs of Dating by Design. <laughs> okay. So uh, it's a metaphorical dictionary that uh, looks at both of those topics. And I find that the lexicon of design provides a metaphor to question, construct, and improve our relationships. It's a really clear framework that I think helps people understand this whole big idea um, a little bit easier. So this is a sort of initial um, list that I made of all the letters and the different words. So there's everything from affordance to attractiveness bias, expectation maps to bad breaks, uh, kerning to objectivity. So I'm going to share with you the first six letters of my alphabet. A is for alignment. So alignment is the foundation of really great design, uh, visual design, and also of relationships, where we should look for alignment on things like values, morals, and goals. Uh, in design, we use a grid and then break it. Perhaps that's a good idea uh, in relationships as well. B is for body storming, kind of like brainstorming, but instead of using a pencil, you use your whole body. So one example of that in design is to use um, you know, cardboard or paper prototypes and act out a scenario. There's probably lots of ways you could do that in relationships as well. Uh, C is for constraints. So complete creative control sounds like fun, but it's definitely more interesting and creatively rewarding with constraints and a clear proposal. It's tempting to stay free and unattached in our relationships, but that can make them cheap, insignificant, or boring. D is for the diverge-converge model of the design process, often called the double diamond. Um, so there's this sort of exploratory and narrowing um, process that we go through as designers. Um, with dating, it starts with socializing and then narrowing in on potential partners. The second half of the double diamond is about refining, building, and testing. Uh, but few designs last forever. The flux of our lives and the world mean that we might need a redesign or perhaps a few design updates over the years. And there's nothing wrong with going through this cycle multiple times not just ending it at the end. So E is for empathy, our innate ability to sense what another person is feeling. As Dan Pink says, it's about standing in someone's shoes, seeing with their eyes, or feeling with their hearts. 
Um, it's not about sympathy. It's uh, about really feeling what another person is feeling. And I think that's a good tool, not only for designers, but also for people in relationships. Uh, Evis for feedback, which can be hard as a client, a designer, or a dater, but you can avoid it. It's unhealthy. Uh, feedback has to be positive, constructive, specific, and timely. And when you're getting it right, you should tell someone that as well. I'm not sure what G is for yet. Perhaps gradients, grids, gestalt, game theory, garbage in, garbage out. If you have other ideas, let me know. Um, I'll be writing the next one on my blog very soon. Um, so aside from writing the blog, I've also been doing a few services for uh, people in the dating by design realm. I've helped people create their RFP or request for proposals. Uh, dating personas to help you understand who you're looking for or who you have been dating and maybe shouldn't be. Uh, relationship audits. And I'd really love to do a charrette to help some people design a weekend to, to work together. Uh, it can be, at, be found at the Design Walk-In Clinic from January 22nd to 26th during Design Week at the Gladstone, um, being a design doctor in residence. Um, so stop by for a consultation then. And also follow along with my blog at datingbydesign.ca and I'm on Twitter at A is for Ayla. So thank you.